to find the following indefinite integral using partial fractions where we have multiples of linear factors. I'm looking at indefinite integral of dx over 4x cubed minus 4x squared plus x. When you factor this, this is going to turn into 2x minus 1 squared times x. So what we have to do here is the linear factor that appears with no power just gets its own term, give it a constant a, and then for the power term, we're going to start with the highest power and just let it trail off. So I'm going to have a square here, and I'm going to have just the power of 1, and then we run out. So we'll give each of those a constant, b and c, and so we're going to be solving for a, b, and c, and then once we have those constants, we'll be able to take an antiderivative of each piece, and that'll get us to our answer. As usual, I'm going to clear the denominators out, so we're going to multiply everything on both sides by 2x minus 1 squared times x. When I do that, I'm going to re be reduced to this equation. For this equation, we're going to target the roots. Well, what's going to happen is, because I have a power, the roots won't be enough. But that's okay, because what will happen is I'll solve for enough of the constants that I'll only have one le equation left, and I can get that by putting in any point I want. So you'll see that when I get to it. All right, well, my first root for the x is going to be 0. If I put 0 in here, I get minus 1 squared for a, and then the last two terms drop out. So a is equal to 1. For my 2x minus 1, the root's going to be a half. So if I put a half into this equation, I'm going to lose the first and third term. And that's going to leave me with b over 2 is equal to 1. So b is equal to 2. Now, for my last one, we've run out of roots, 0 and a half. Fine, I just pick any point that makes this look nice. So I'm going to go with x equal to 1. You could go with minus 1. You could go with 3. You could go with pi, whatever you like. But of course, you want to make this as simple as possible. So if I go with x equal to 1, we'll notice I'm going to get a 1 in front of the a, I'm going to get a 1 in front of the b, and I'm going to get a 1 in front of the c. So I have a plus b plus c is equal to 1. Now note, we've already solved for a and b. a is 1, b is 2, so I have 1 equals 1 plus 2 plus c. Moving the 3 here to the other side gives me c equal to minus 2. So I found all my constants. Now, I should check to see that if I put these constants into this equation here, what I have on the right side matches up with what I have on the left side. So here's the check for that. So all we're going to do is put everything over a common denominator. Okay, so this is missing a 2x minus 1 squared. This one's missing a factor of x. And this one's missing a factor of x times 2x minus 1. So we're going to get this on the top. And I'll just expand one piece at a time. The first gives me 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. And the next piece just goes in as a 2x. And then the last piece goes in as minus 4x squared plus 2x. And you notice if we go down the columns, I'm just going to be left with the 1 over x squared 2x minus 1 squared. So my check works out for this. Now I can take an indefinite integral. We've separated everything out. We're just going to attack it one term at a time. For the 1 over x, that's no problem. That's going to give me the natural log of absolute value of x. And then for the last two terms, I want to do a u substitution just to make it easier to look at. So I let u be equal to 2x minus 1. du equals 2 dx. dx equals du over 2. I substitute in. I have 2 over u squared minus 2 over u times du over 2. And you notice the twos all go away. So all I'm looking at now is, can I write this out so it's easier to look at, u to the minus 2 minus u to the minus 1 du. So for the first one, I'm going to add 1 and flip it over. That's going to give me a minus. OK, and don't forget, we have a natural log of x in here. So I carry the natural log of x along. The first one. We add 1 and flip it over, which is going to give me minus u to the minus 1. If I put u back in, that's going to be minus 2x minus u to the minus 1, or 1 over 2x minus 1. If I go to this term, the antiderivative of u inverse 
is just natural log of absolute value of u. So I put in my 2x minus 1, which gives me minus natural log 2x minus 1, and then plus a constant. Note, I have a difference of two natural logs here. So I can just put this term in the bottom of this one, giving me natural log x over 2x minus 1, absolute value minus 1 over 2x minus 1, plus a constant, and that's my answer. Of course, we should check this. OK, this will be a little messy. Derivative of natural log of x of box is just going to be you put box in the bottom, and then take the derivative of what's inside the box. So that's going to give me, we put box in the bottom, then derivative of what's inside the box, we're going to hit with the quotient rule. So derivative of the first is x times the bottom, minus the x times the derivative of the bottom, so I get a 2, and then divided by the bottom squared. So we have this here. This is going to crunch down to, if you're looking, to a minus 1 in the top. We're going to have a 2x two, two minus 1 squared in the bottom. And then this part here is going to flip up as 2x minus 1 over x. Okay, if you don't like the flipping up part, just multiply top and bottom by 2x minus 1. I'll clear the denominator in the bottom and then put an extra one up top. For this term, this is just 2x minus 1 to the minus 1. So to bring the minus 1 down, it's going to turn into a plus. That minus 1 exponent is going to turn into a minus 2. And then chain rule says we multiply in the inside by a 2. So that's just going to give me 2 over 2x minus 1 squared. All right, we're over here. When you start to combine these messes, you'll notice, okay, this term here is missing an x. So I put an x in there, and it gives me 2x up top. We have a minus sign on this, so that's going to give me minus 2x plus 1. That 2x goes away with that. And then I'm left with 1 over x times 2x minus 1 squared. And that agrees with my integrand, so I know I've done things right.